Gentlemen, to House Party 5v5 in the Premier League Season 6 Grand Final between Space Age Wizards and Never Clucky. Game number one, the Wizards were ahead the entire time until Clucky had an awesome Baron steal off the back of Let My Sup Go and won the game in one fell push. We'll have to see if they're able to continue that streak or if the Space Age Wizards can tie this one up. I'm Captain Flowers here in the casting desk, joined by Deck Club Ace. And Deck, how do you think the teams are going to adapt for this game? So, first adaptation that I'd like to point out uh, is obviously in the bands. Uh, immediately, the second band, they didn't want the Callista to go through, obviously, but that second band dropping the Azir band, giving some immediate respect to the Azumi Azir. Not something you really want to let him have after he basically just kind of, I don't know, he felt like he didn't really do much for part of the game, and then suddenly was just super terrifying, and they couldn't really do anything about it. But... I think the biggest adaptation is going to be whether or not they change up not just the style of team comps they play, but the way in which they play them. Because that was a pick comp and they got a few early picks, they got a lot of towers, but like they couldn't really commit. So the question is, are they willing to kind of change things up and maybe go for maybe a dive comp? Maybe they're going to go for like a poke comp and they're just going to try and poke everybody down. Never mind, we're going to see maybe that first Ramus pick. We've got the Ram has picked up, likely going to see him in the top lane, though it is possible we could see him in the jungle as well. Super Frank playing those tanky champions that get that much tankier thanks to having so many free defensive stats. He's once again going to be that big initiator, but he's going to have more initiation power, although slightly less utility in this game. He's going to be able to roll in there, tie down that AD carry, potentially the mid lane as well, and just soak damage for days. And really, that's all you'd really want out of a tank. You just want somebody that can take so much damage that it kind of makes the carries consider, should we even bother trying to attack him? Should we just ignore him and try and kill somebody else? And once again, this solution being hovered with a slightly different support this time because that Jana did get banned out. Uh, Nami being yet another one of those supports who has recently become seen as a much more popular pick, despite the fact that while she wasn't necessarily bad or anything, um, with the decline of the very heavy AP mage supports, uh, the healer and utility supports are becoming popular again. Nami and Lucian, I'm not going to lie, I haven't seen a Nami in a little while. We'll have to see what they're able to do with that one. And of course, Space Age Wizards coming out with the Skarner salute. I highly doubt we'll actually see him locked in this game, but you know it would make me the happiest of all possible things. It, it would make you a happy little scorpion. Oh, absolutely. But, like I say, we're probably going to see that switched over, whether it's immediately or at the last possible second. Gunshin hovering over the Draven as well, and that's another one I fully expect to see changed out for something else by the time these guys actually lock their champions in. Switching over now to Morgana, capable of providing plenty of peel with that black shield, locking down people with those snares as well. I'm really interested to see what the Wizards do with their overall comp this game, because last time, the pick comp that they used... We saw that they weren't able to pull the trigger with it. They weren't able to find the opportunities to actually lock the game away when they were up 10,000 gold with two exposed inhibitors on the enemy side. So they've got to find something that lets them actually end the game. I think one of the big problems they ran into was uh, that their top lane, uh, Super Frank, yes, okay, he was bullying High Omnir really hard, but at the same time, when you're playing a poppy top lane and you're having to split push to try and like pull attention away, uh, you don't take inhibitors really fast. You're not really good at doing that. You're really good at like bullying people in fights. So ideally, you'd send somebody else to go split push and you'd just be around to make sure that if they do leave, you can collapse on somebody and kill them. Uh, unfortunately, that's not how it went. So what I'm expecting is that they're going to try and do something a little bit different this time. Maybe they're going to go for a, a team comp that can actually split push or a comp that can die. From what we're seeing right now, um, the the Ramus pickup, the Sivir pickup, the Morgana, all of those are things that want to go in, they want to hit the gas pedal, and they want to dive. They just want to dive so hard, I'm surprised there's not a Nautilus in this game because they're going so deep in the ocean. But picking up this Poppy and Elise, uh, stealing away those picks from last game for Never Clucky. Well, they worked out well for Clucky. The, the Elise was able to do some cool stuff. We'll have to see what she's able to do again this time in the hands of Let My Sup Go as opposed to DMX. Now, one thing that, they're, that we're going to have to look for, one thing that I want to look for, is last time, like we were commenting around the 20-minute mark, Elise kind of passed that early game, early mid-game point where Elise is just this monstrous force in the jungle without really having a huge impact. I want to see if Sup is able to make more plays with that champion early than DMX was able to. 
Let's see if he can. He did manage to do quite a bit uh, early on with the Gragas, so I wouldn't be surprised if he managed to do a lot early on with this Elise. Uh, hovering that Vlad, it's not something that I would expect, but at the same time, it's not necessarily bad against Poppy either. Ooh. It's locked the, in. They're just going to the, flex pick it. The, the Rex side, though, hang on. Hang on just one second here. That's a mid Vlad with a top lane Rammus. Space Age Wizards with the base drafting phase. I haven't seen Vlad in a really long time. The only times I have seen Vlad recently, it's been an absolute disaster. He started off okay, and by the time the end game rolls around, he just doesn't have the impact he needs to do. His damage isn't high enough to make up for the fact that he's got zero utility, and he just ends up not being able to contribute enough for his team to win. Hopefully, they're going to prove me wrong. Hopefully, I, they're going to demonstrate to me that Gunshin on this Vlad is capable of carrying a game, but it's going to be something that's really unorthodox to see. Can I just say that it's really weird that, uh, by the looks of it, Neverclucky has basically just stolen most of um, Space's Winter's last team comp? The only thing that changed is the Nami. Hey, that's what you gotta do sometimes. If it works, play it. And that's what these guys are gonna be going for. The Nami will be swapped in in exchange for the other support. But we'll have to see if these guys can close the game with it. Because the problem was, last time, yeah, Never Clucky was getting bodied by that team comp for the first 40 minutes. But when the game ended and the Nexus exploded, it wasn't Space Age Wizards who still had theirs intact. That's true, but then you gotta look at it, right? The team that this previous team comp was up against was very heavy, forcing engages and forcing disengages. Meanwhile, Space Age Witchers is playing like a, a chasing, fighting team comp now. They've got Ramus for chasing, they've got Sivir. Sure, Sivir ult can be used defensively to get away, but like for a team comp like this, uh oh, looks like we had a little bit of an issue with Let My Sup Go. Uh, but those picks will still be the same, likely. Yeah, same, same pick, same ban. Oh, the, the trades could not happen. So we can keep talking about those picks, though, because we do still have them. Uh, one thing to say, though, that, again, there's not a ton of crowd control on the other side here. Yeah, and that's one thing that I was talking about with the Vlad, is that normally with your mid laner, you know, you want that long range, you want wave clear potential, you want CC, you want playmaking ability. And Vlad, although he has plenty of damage, and he's got AoE, his AoE and his wave there requires, requires, I should say, him to get pretty close to that wave. The Tides of Blood isn't this long range ability that you just clear waves with. So he's got to get close to do the waves for one, and for two, there's no actual CC to set the plays up with. Vlad's got to have somebody else set those plays up for him. And yeah, you've got Rek'Sai, yeah, you've got Ramus. You have the ability to set those up, but Vlad's got to be ready at the drop of a pin to get in there and make that damage happen when those initiators initiate. Definitely, and we will see this pick ban go by really fast, so we're not even going to bother talking about the uh, the bans and stuff. We already know what's going to happen. Um, but I got to say, though, like once again, it's really weird because... I guess what they're going to be trying to do here is just leverage the fact that they're going to be doing so much damage uh, in an AoE between the Sivir and the Vlad and the Morgana and everything else, and I think that that might work to their advantage, so who knows, maybe maybe they'll surprise us a little bit. Um, it is certainly refreshing to see all of the uh, their respective roles pick the champions that they will be playing, it's uh, very different. All right, so now we're for real going to be starting this game up. Hopefully no more client issues. It looks like everybody has been able to secure their champions properly since you don't have to worry about drafting in a certain order. All the picks are in place. All the champions are in place. All the players are in place. And we'll be launching into this one momentarily. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be Premier League Grand Final match number two in this best of five. Never Clucky's already up one to zero thanks to that amazing comeback victory in game number one. And now they're running the same composition that Saw was so close to winning with in that game number one, but against a very different matchup. They don't have to deal with that Azir late game, soldiers stab you four times and all of a sudden you're dead. Granted, there's still damage on the enemy team, but it's just not that Azir and Ezreal long range, impossible to engage on with the Gragas and Janna protecting you type of comp. Gotta say though, uh, I'm very curious to see what Spaces Witchers is in planning with this, because the thing about this team comp, uh, and obviously we have to mention it, it is a Sivir comp is what it is. Um, it is hearkening back to when Sivir was the meta AD carry, and all the comps that were being played were either Sivir comps or were built to counter Sivir comps, and that's what it is. It uses the very potent movement speed to try and engage or disengage, and it will be using as much power as possible to burst down people. So. I don't know. The thing is, the difference between uh, last game and this game is last game, the team cop that Neverclucky is running now had a bard. 
Uh, and Bard went somewhat tanky. He didn't really go a ton of burst because he was really there for the crowd control, so he went like CDR tank Bard. Um, this time around, you've got this squishier Nami who can't really afford to go tank. She has to go like utility AP to be effective. So that's removed one tank off the board. So that means there's only two tanks to deal with in the form of Elise and Poppy, and Ari and Lucian, if you can close on them, are actually pretty easy to kill. Oh, absolutely. We saw last time that Muse on Lucian ended up getting himself into some compromising situations more than once. And when he was in his opponent's sights, they brought him down almost immediately. So Talisman's going to have to be careful about that one. And one interesting thing is both these 80 carries are going to be short range. Both these 80 carries can be punished for going to aggro because in order to be successful, of course, you've got to go aggro. You've got to make sure you can get the auto attacks. But when you've got that limited range, you've got to be ever so careful with the positioning because if your opponents can punish that, whether it's through a flash or just a really nicely landed skill shot for CC, they can take you down real quick. Definitely. And this is definitely the team comp you don't want to be throwing that into. Uh, I will say, though, in this mid lane, I'm expecting it to be a little bit relaxed early on. We will see a lot of harass coming out from both sides, but for the most part, um, Vlad doesn't really want to go super aggressive until, like, around level 7-ish. He's got maybe an item finished, because the thing is, he scales really hard once he starts getting some items. But until then, he's really just trying to very safely farm, maybe do a little bit of harassing. He's not really going to out-harass Ari that much, but he's also going to get pushed into his tower a lot because of his... Um, well, his, his Tides of Blood don't do that much damage early on, and he's definitely going to be maxing Transfusion, so eh, we'll see how it goes. It's going to be an interesting matchup to see for sure, if for no other reason other than the fact that, like I said, mid-Vladimir is not something I've seen in a very long time. So maybe Gunshin's going to blow us out of the water. Maybe he's going to define a brand new meta and show us exactly why mid-Vlad is the best pick this side of Korea. Or maybe he's going to end up 0-7. We'll have to see which side of that coin it ends up landing on. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about 20 seconds away from loading into game number one. Stick with us here at House Party 5v5. We'll be right back with game number two. I made the mistake of just saying game number one. Forgive me for that one. Of the grand final match. Stay here. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Summoner's Rift. We are in our second game of the Premier League Season Finals, and man, it is roaring for another great game. We've got two very strong team comps, one of which we just saw an iteration of in the previous game, so we'll see how it goes for the other team running it this time around. I am, of course, Deck Club Ace on color, and joining me tonight is my great friend, Captain Flowers, on play-by-play, -play, and man... Uh, I, I hope there's at least half as many great plays as last game, because oh, I, I, I would just love that, please. Last game was a lot of fun to watch. Like I say, the ending was something nobody was expecting. The climactic Baron steal into the single push. If you looked at how long Space Age Wizards was pushing up against their opponents, and then how quickly Never Clucky said, we don't have time for any of this, and just walked into the enemy base and won the game, it was awesome to see. Definitely. And it was something that, once again, as a caster... I love seeing stuff like that because there's no way we could have predicted that. Even if they had, like, even if we'd called the Baron Steel, we wouldn't have been able to call a win off of that because there was a 10k gold lead. Oh yeah, the fact that the Space Age Wizards had 10,000 gold up their sleeve and just couldn't push two exposed inhibitors was really telling that Clucky had a good chance to win the game. But even with a good chance to win the game, a single push 
off the back of a Baron Steel is absolutely crazy levels of momentum. And we'll have to see how inspiring that is for them going into the second game. Now, I would like to say, though, uh, Gunshot is actually doing something slightly different than Izumi did when he was up against this team comp. Uh, he actually went for the barrier instead of going for the cleanse, uh, probably realizing that while avoiding the CC is useful, um, surviving the burst is probably a little bit more useful. Gunshin, of course, last game had a very difficult time early on in the lane. He started the game off 0-3-1 on the Ari. A lot of attention was being paid to him mid lane by Let My Sup Go. The ganks, the flashes, the body slams, and Gunshin was not able to avoid it. He died repeatedly. He wasn't able to get that good start that he was looking for, so hopefully this time around things will go a little bit better for him there in the mid lane. Now, I gotta say, in terms of junglers, um, if I was gonna give it to somebody to go ar aggressive really early, let my sup go 100%. The dude is, like, really good at uh, deciding that he wants to go gank bot lane, and rest assured, he's probably gonna gank bot or mid lane, because, eh, we'll see. The bot lane uh, matchup is gonna be a little bit easier for him to gank uh, early on, before Ramus gets super tanky. Top lane, maybe... I mean, there was a lane swap, but again, it's really weird because you want to put pressure on the bot side so you can get that early dragon. And maybe that's that's what was intended with the lane swap. They wanted to take the focus off of the dragon. And that dragon is one thing that's got to be in the back of Never Clucky's minds going into game number two. Because the thing that almost lost them game number one was the fact that the wizards were able to get both Baron buff and dragon aspect at the same time. So this time around, Clucky's got to at least be thinking, all right, we just got to get one. We've got to make sure they're not able to five stack it at the 30 something minute mark and push that aspect on us. And rest assured, it's going to be dangerous. Muse taking a ton of harass damage though, but throwing out his own damage and that black shield just stopping the slow so a little bit more damage can't be put down. That's okay though. Mid lane, as expected, Izumi kind of low on mana, but overall just doing a lot of damage. Super frank. DMX looking for the gank here in the bot lane. Hi, I'm Nerb trying to walk himself away from this one. The taunt will not come down in time, and Nerb walks himself away. It's okay, though. Didn't manage to actually get any summoners or anything, but uh, did manage to waste a little bit of Nerb's time. Took a little bit more damage than he kind of wanted, forcing one of those charges off of that Corrupting Potion to heal himself. Not a position you want to be in, but that's okay. Top side, fairly even. I mean, overall, there's not really much going on. The farm is obviously in Muse's control, but uh, that's just because I think early on, Sivir has a slight advantage in terms of the farming, just because uh, a little bit better AoE that doesn't cost quite as much. Puddle's going to be put down. No binding comes out. Azumi pushing up here in the mid lane. And we're not seeing a whole lot of crazy CS advantages, but we're definitely seeing some numbers advantages coming out all over the place. Mid lane's pretty much dead even, that's the exception. But top side, we're going to see Nair getting a very nice advantage over Super Frank nice and early, despite the fact that DMX showed up there into that lane. And in the AD carries, we're also seeing Muse take a nice lead over Talisman. Now, I do want to say, though, it... It's a little weird because even on champions that don't use mana, it's very common that um, the junglers will start with Thunder's Talisman anyway, simply because the heal over time effect that you get from it is usually better than the lifesteal that you get. But I guess I guess it works out for DMX. He does manage to kill the camps a little bit faster. Um, not that Rek'Sai needs a ton of health clearing faster. Zero to zero is still the team score, but we're seeing a couple hundred gold going to the way of Never Clucky, getting ahead a little bit early. Binding will not connect onto Talisman. Spell Shield blocks Piercing Light. Talisman looking to go a little bit deeper on this one. Won't be able to actually find the kill, but he lets Muse know who's boss. Forces him to heal up a little bit. Definitely something he wants to do. He was a little bit behind in CS, but uh, showing that eh, I don't really care if I'm behind in CS. I'll just uh, I'll just poke you out of lane, no problem. And uh, I am near. Despite getting ganked, pushing Super Frank back yet again. Um, unfortunately, that's not a position you want to be in. Ooh, let my sup is top lane, but standing on a ward. Right on top of a ward means Muse and Rolara back themselves up. Clear this minion wave away. Of course, not the best time to show up for the gank anyway, considering you've got that massive minion wave pushing into the turret. He will walk himself up into the lane. Might be looking to set up for a lane gank after the fact, and that looks like exactly where he's going. Walking up into the brushes, trying to bait his opponents in. I think he realized that they saw him. Yeah, he's backing now. Okay, so... But one thing to say, though, uh, that is actually a good position to be in in terms of ganking, because once it hits the tower and it resets, uh, that means that the wave is going to be back, and that gives you enough time to get into the jungle so that you can actually... or get into the lane so that you can actually gank from a lane bush. So it does have its advantages. It's just... it's really risky, because if you get seen in the process, then you wasted a whole bunch of time for nothing. 
Exactly. DMX just kind of crawling around here in the river right now, not finding a whole lot for himself. Gunshin has got to that first lane milestone that Vlad wants to get to. He's got the Hextech revolver built, so he's going to have that extra sustain. Tides of Blood can now be kept up at four stacks. And for those of you that aren't familiar with exactly the way Vladimir wants to play the lane, Tides of Blood, keeping that thing at four stacks is very critical to being able to win trades, push lanes, and do everything, really. So getting that revolver and being able to maintain those four stacks without actually losing any real health is very, very important for him and his presence and tempo in this lane. That's right, and he's going in a little bit aggressive, although not where he wants to be, having to pop that pool. Meanwhile, top lane. Popping the pool early as Angel forced to flash away from DMX. TP showing up all over the place. Super Frank is here, Nerb is here, and everybody just sort of walks away. Man, that, that was like the most anticlimactic teleport battle. <laughs> just both of them teleport in and then nothing happens because they don't want to fight each other. It's yeah, great. that's the best thing that you see, is all these players just squaring off. You got three guys from each side, two TPs coming in, and as soon as the TPs land, everybody's just like, nah, not feeling it anymore. Walks away. Uh, it looks like we did actually have a request from chat on what ratings these guys are. For people that uh, are not familiar with House Party 5v5, these guys are, on average, in our Premier League, usually between... Uh, Plat and above, we do have a few people that are a little bit higher than Diamond. Uh, in fact, in this game, we have on the blue side here, uh, going from top to bottom, we've got Diamond 1, Plat 1, Diamond 1, Diamond 2, and Diamond 4. Meanwhile, on the red side here, we've got Diamond 2, Master, I believe still, uh, Diamond 5, Diamond 3, and then Diamond 3. Um, that may have changed since I last checked, but uh, in general, these guys are like, very high platinum, mid diamond players. Good times, 10.9 thousand to 11.3 thousand gold. Still no big changes, still no first blood. Eight minutes into this game, neither jungler been able to find success so far. But we might be looking at seeing a 2v2 here in the mid lane. Both positioning nearby, looking for that setup. Azumi's got himself the blue buff, so he's got plenty of mojo to use that mana once it gets a little bit of time to regenerate. Low for the time being, but blue buff will make sure that doesn't remain that way for very long. DMX gonna pick up his red as Gunshin just keeps farming. You're Vladimir, you're able to scale into this late game damage dealing monstrosity. So you're just trying to get through laning phase until you've got that level 7, level 9 power spike where transfusion is up pretty much constantly and you're able to spam those heals. Super Frank putting some pain onto Talisman here in the top lane. As Gunshin, no matter how much damage he takes from this enemy Ari, he's still able to heal back up. As long as he doesn't keep walking himself into charms over and over and over again, he can just heal up from transfusion and keep on pushing. Yeah, see, there's a lot of pressure coming into this mid lane, and um, I'm not actually sure why, because if you wanted to pressure Vlad, the time has passed. You needed to do that before he had a gun blade, and before he had all ranks in his transfusion. Now, he can just, even if you put him at less than half health, because he can keep ties of blood up forever, he can just keep himself full health. Just heal constantly, Nerb and Sup looking for the kill down here in the bot lane. Muse might be in some trouble, has to flash himself away. Here comes the rappel. Muse is going to go down. First blood, kill credit goes over there to that Elise as Let My Sup Go might be looking for more. Got to be careful on this one though. Down about 300 HP as Talisman and Super Frank into the 1v1 top side. Talisman winning out for the time being. Out of mana, won't pursue that one any further. 1 0 goes the way of Never Clucky. Meanwhile, though, in the mid lane, <laughs> Zumi trying to fight Gunshin. I don't actually know if this is going to go the way Gunshin wants though. Gunshin ignited, still trying to find the damage. Hemo Plague about to pop. Azumi low, Gunshin low. Orb comes out, won't connect. DMX looking for the follow up. Can he find that knock up into the air? Answer's gonna be no. Azumi Shinichi's got the better flash and gets himself away. Sometimes uh, the fight does not go quite the way you expected, and I don't think that Azumi was expecting to take quite that much damage from the Hemo Plague going off. Didn't manage to kill him though. Props to him for managing to hold on to that flash for as long as possible. If he'd used it a little bit too early, DMX would have caught him and killed him pretty fast. So, eh, pretty good. Still, not much happening. There is one kill now that went uh, to let my sup go. So, hey, I'll, I'll take my points. I called it, got the first kill. But, that being said, everywhere else there's not really much going on. There's a little bit of a CS lead in terms of the top side because they did swap and uh, Haim Nerb is actually a little bit better at farming against his opponent than uh, Super Frank is. But overall, not much really changing. Let my sup go. Doing what he can to hold the line here in the mid lane. Gotta respect the damage coming down from Gunchin. Walks himself away. 
These guys are having a pretty nice gold lead for only one kill on the board, no objectives on the board. Never Clucky is not playing around this time. They've got a team composition that's not about this scaling with Ezreal and Azir. They're not about just waiting for that massive 5v5 team fight. These guys are able to skirmish better. They're not just going to lose their lanes and then have to sort of catch up as the game goes on. They're in control and they know it. Yep, and that is the position that you want to be in against a team like this because, uh, once again, they want to have the commanding lead over these guys. They don't want to be pushed around by the Sivir Comp. They don't want to get, like, blown up by Hemoplague combos with the uh, with Morgana Bindings and Soul Shackles and all that stuff. So, uh-oh, Izumi. You're Izumi in some dead. trouble here in the mid lane, gets himself away. Rolaro will not take the damage from that orb. Now they're looking for the return kill. Can they find it? Bubble will only land on the Gungeon. Cocoon follows it up. Black Shield is down, but will it even be enough? The pool is there, but how much longer will he stay alive? DMX, now the one in trouble, has to get himself away from this one. Down to about 200 HP. Health bar is so very low for all the Wizards, but they get themselves away. And overall, a very good play coming out from Clucky. They managed to, um, even though they didn't get any kills, they did just enough damage to make it so that with Super Frank here, there's not really much that Space Age Wizards can do. They know that Rolara does not have Soul Shackles because he just failed using it on Izumi, so Izumi didn't die. They know for a fact that Gunshin and DMX have to leave because both of those are really low. And they know they just got at least two flashes. So overall, easy dragon for them. Uh, I'm not really expecting any contest to come out from uh, Space Age Wizards. And it's... It's a really weird turn of events because just last game, they were avoiding Dragon like the plague. It's like I said earlier on when we started this game, I'm looking to see them fully go for at least one Dragon. They don't want that aspect being on the table so early yet again. They have to realize what happened in game number one. They have to realize that that was problematic, and they have. And they said, you know what? We see the opportunity. We're going to take that, and we're not going to have to deal with that win condition or loss condition again. That's definitely true, and it's looking like they're considering the Herald, but then, eh, probably not a good idea. You don't know where everyone else on the team is yet. Uh, bot side turret did fall at some point, making it an even trade right now. One turret to one turret, one dragon, and one kill. Even so, there's still about a 1,000 gold lead just in the CS. A lot of wards being put down from both teams, despite the fact that Saw's behind. They're still slowly creeping up their vision line into the enemy jungle. We can see some wards being placed down here to the entrances of the clucky red side jungle, one deep there next to the wraith camp. And overall, these guys are still looking for opportunities to find catches, to find picks, to find plays. And that's a good attitude to have. They're not so far behind that they can't do anything. They just are a little bit behind, and they're looking to remedy that with aggressive play. We do see early on Izumi responding to uh, Gunshin's Vlad by saying, eh, I guess I'll just build this early Morel and Amicon and force you to wait. Um, he does currently have a Negatron. I think he's kind of hoping to be able to stay in lane and push Gunshin out, but that's not really going to work. Super Frank and Talisman, 1v1 here in the bot lane. Super Frank's got the taunt, gets some damage down onto him, but it's still Lucian. You're still Ramus. You're not able to stay on top of him. Too effective right now. He's just going to get that damage onto you from range, and then there's nothing you can do about it. Use Rolara and DMX, all positioned up here around that tier 1 turret in the top side. One turret to one turret. Things are all tied up in that department 14 minutes into this game. Objectives not being prioritized too super hard by either team, but not 100% neglected either. Well, at this point, you got to think about it, right? So in mid lane, uh, Never, Never Clucky already took a tower. So, And that was a tower that last game took them quite a long time to be able to pressure uh, because they couldn't actually get any, any momentum there. But now... They got it down really early because they managed to push Vlad away and push the rest of the team away. Use dodging that uh, that bubble with her own bubble, a very pretty bubble. Uh, Izumi, I, I think you can win this fight if I uh, let my subs here, but you need to actually commit. He'll just back himself away from that one. Let my sub gonna look to farm his raptors. Won't be able to do so. Those things are already gone. Nobody really positioning up for anything right now. Neither team is able to find the aggro, find the positioning, find what they need to find to actually make an impact, take an objective, force a fight, do anything. And we're kind of just seeing Farming Simulator 2016 instead. You know, I'm kind of surprised nobody played a Nasus if they were going to be farming this much. Are to they, see Nasus like... in an actual competitive game. Now, like we were talking about the Vlad and how unusual that is. I think I would have to check if my monitor was actually broken if somebody locked in Nasus. Hey, I would do it.
I would do it because it would be funny, that's about it. But, uh, I don't know. I, I'm the kind of person that will spend, like, 15 hours playing Stardew Valley and wonder where my life went. <laughs> Base deck making the plays. All right, so we're looking at the game, and if you are... All right, if, give, me the, give me the lowdown, deck. If you're Clucky and if you're Saw, one opinion from each side, what's the play you make to actually get some momentum going in this game? Because right now, we're at a dead stop. Oh, 100% is to um, to try and get that tower bot side uh, so that you can put even more pressure on the dragon. You want to do exactly what uh, Saw just did to you for Neverclucky. And Neverclucky wants to get that bot... Oh, getting a flash from Let My Sub Go. Doesn't want to get killed there. Meanwhile, on the opposition side, Space Ace Wizards really, 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 really needs to just farm up. The, like, their team gets progressively stronger as the game goes on uh, until, like, the late mid-game to... Uh, much later in the game, uh, once Vlad gets to a point where he's almost impossible to kill, it doesn't matter how many resistance you are, he just heals up all the damage you do to him. Do you see DMX coming in, potentially gonna do some damage to Azumi here, but Azumi doesn't seem to care. Azumi walks himself away nice and easy. Culling comes down, put a lot of pain onto Rallara. Let my sup go, and the rest of this squad for Never Clucky. Looking to pressure onto this tier one. They want to find some objective somewhere, somehow, as Nerf and Super Frank. These guys played this game the entire time in game number one. That 1v1 super tank split push, and they're going to keep it up in game number two. Tidal Wave comes down. Rolar is almost going to be bubbled up as DMX tries to return the aggro. The orb comes down. Up and over goes Sup, but he's got to land back in the same spot. Barely gets himself away. Azumi Shinichi dashing in. Muse almost going to fall. Red turret destroyed. Nobody dead, but look at those health. Far, such a critical state. Azumi Shinichi finishes off Muse with the Ignite. I uh, I actually was about to say, Izumi, what are you doing? Uh, because he walked into the tower and took like three tower shots just to throw some damage onto uh, what looked like he was going for Rolara, but he instead turns around and like Ignite taps Muse and manages to get a little bit of extra damage dashing away. Props to him. Managing to do a ton of this damage to the tower, but I don't actually think they're going to manage to get it down just yet. Gunshin going to take a ton of damage here from the tower. Gunshin trying to get himself away from that spider, but he's found himself caught up in a web. Barriers pop. He might turn this one around. Let my sup go. Trying to scurry himself away. He's got the outplay. 1v1 goes to sup. Just barely. If he had a little bit more time, he would have managed to actually get the kill. But unfortunately... You don't have all the time in the world to get the kills you need, so maybe he shouldn't have been too close to that tower and eating two or three tower shots. So, meanwhile, though, bot lane, I am near of uh, managing to push Super Frank out of lane and just do so much damage to this tower. It was at full health, so he's managed to finally put it to half health. And once again, not really much going on. Both teams are kind of licking from their wounds. We did see that uh, the rest of Never Clicky has managed to get two more kills. Both of those actually going to uh, let, uh, well, one to let my sup go and one to Azar uh, Ari, rather. Blah, blah, getting confused now. Um, Mew's coming down here. I don't actually know if there's much that uh, he could do, even with Morgana here to uh, Hyam Nair. Not a whole lot going down in this one, but Dragon is alive. We might see a contest for that. Rolara getting himself away for the time being. Shield will connect from there. DMX is here to make sure that support gets away safely. As Azumi's already found himself in the pit, there's wards up from both teams. One, of course, just being that little bit of a blue trinket ward showing up there that they might remove in no time at all. Let My Sup Go is here, and Dragon is the call for Never Clucky. Space Age Wizards have to try to get themselves involved some way. Or they might just back away from this one. Rolara already way too low. He finds a good binding. Azumi Shinichi might be knocked up into the air. And yes, he will be. Tidal Wave comes down. Azumi has to run away. Super Frank not able to find the kill so far. Azumi still alive. That's going to be one dropping already. It's Rolara dead. It's going to be High I'm Nair taken down as well by Muse. Two dead on the side of Clucky as the rest of the team has to head for the hill. Gunshin takes down Angel as Sup has to run himself away. The Hemo Plague still ticking. Going to detonate on that one. Gunshin with a good pool trying to get himself away. Get in range for the rest of that damage. Sup's going to fall. That's going to be Muse finding another kill for himself. A one for three going the way of the Space Age Wizards. They lose the dragon, but they win the fight. Unfortunately, that fight would have been so much better if Azumi's positioning had been slightly different. Unfortunately, because he got caught out, that meant that he immediately had to disengage. So the only damage he did was the damage that he was doing while he was fleeing for his life. It was effectively a 4v5, and at that point, Hayam Nair was already almost dead. It's impressive that Neverclicky managed to even get a kill out of that.
Talisman looked for the chase onto Muse, but now he's got to be careful because the rest of the Wizards are here and ready to cast a spell. Azumi Shinichi able to find the charm out of DMX, gets himself knocked up. DMX still trying to walk away, but goodbye Rek'Sai. Orb takes that kill down, brings Neverclucky up 5-3. to three. Azumi and Angel might not be able to find anymore, but they've still taken the jungler for no worries at all. It's a little bit of a turnaround. Uh, not really much they can get in this lane, though. They might be able to push it into the tower, but... Uh... I'm fairly confident that uh, Gunshin will be back in time to defend this tower, so I'm not expecting them to stay for it. In fact, I'm expecting them to kind of rotate towards this top side maybe a little bit, make sure that they can rotate and get these towers down that are on the outskirts before they try and pressure down some mid-ones, assuming getting hit by yet another skill shot. Rolar has been doing a good job of dialing these bindings in on top of Azumi especially. Because even though Ari's got those three dashes, it's really hard to utilize those when you're bound into the ground for about three seconds. 2-0-1 still on Azumi. The fact that he survived in that last team fight at Dragon was absolutely crazy, by the way, because he's walking away for anybody who didn't catch it. He had about 20, 30 health left. He's walking away. Super Frank's coming in from the side. He's got the trimmers ticking, and the trimmer tick just barely misses Azumi as he gets himself away from the fight entirely and somehow lives. Easy turrets, easy life, getting that bot side turret. Relative ease, I almost think they committed too much to it because mid is actually taking a lot of damage from just Vlad and Rolara standing here. And unfortunately, Super Frank is kind of having to defend against topside with Iam Nerb. And uh, I don't know, I, he can't win against Iam Nerb right now because Nerb just does so much damage overall. Poppy being Poppy, doing Poppy things as Angel tries to clear out some of this vision that the Wizards keep aggressively placing in their opponent's jungle. Wizards have now tied up that turret count. 3-3, three to three, all the Tier 1 turrets across the board have been taken off. So both teams have the ability to put down those deep rewards in their opponent's jungle, try to find picks, try to punish rotations, all that good stuff. And once again, we're at the point where either team has the opportunity and the ability to make a play, and it's the first one to find that momentum and truly utilize it that's going to find themselves ahead. I mean, just look at the gold. We saw that uh, there was a lead on the side of Neverclucky, Izumi, not quite managing to do what he wants to as uh, Gunshin here. Emo Plague comes down, Gunshin does not have Flash to try to get that final transfusion execution, so he backs himself away, but Azumi's got to respect that Vlad damage. Vlad having the Rileys completed means he's always able to stay in range once he lands that first spell on him. A little bit of a skirmish coming out in mid lane here. Muse looking to fight up against Talisman and let my stuff go. DMX there as well. Who's going to drop first? Flash away from Muse, trying to keep himself alive. Culling comes down. There comes the tidal wave. Binding will not connect. Nerve going to slam Gunshin completely out of the fight. Nobody's still dead. These two teams doing a wonderful job of avoiding the grave so far this game. So for a team that uh, doesn't actually have that much in terms of uh, like total control of a fight, uh, Neverclucky is really good at disengaging from a, uh, from a Sivir team comp. As we've seen multiple times, High Omnair landing some really good Keeper's Verdicts, some really, really clutch Tidal Waves managing to knock up regularly between three and five members of Saw, and I, I gotta say, I don't actually know how Saw is gonna manage to, um, to collapse on anybody, because it seems that Neverclucky has got the disengage game down. Now, if only they could get their positioning good enough to actually get anything from that. If only, if only, indeed, 38.0 to 38.3 thousand gold. Game could not be closer 25 minutes in as both sides continue to struggle in this tug of war for who's able to actually get the drop on the other side. Who's able to make a pick that finally puts a health bar to zero instead of so very close, but they still walk away. Let my sup go once again, just clearing out some wards, clearing out some minions around here in the top half of the map. Nairb going to do the same thing. This Space Age Wizards team never lets go of the aggro. These guys are always looking to make plays. They're always looking to push up, always forcing Clucky to answer. But like you said, Clucky's been answering wonderfully so far. He was taking a ton of damage from the culling there and not quite wanting to get that fight down. DMX here, though, probably not a fight that you want to chase into. Although maybe they're willing to collapse Time Nair on the side here. Lara, he's about to be the first one to fall near, be able to find the hammer shock, and he's dead already. Tidal wave lands, here comes the bubble. Super Frank knocked up into the air, but Nair slams both away. Gunshin's got the barrier, forced to use the pool, but the ignite makes sure he's executed in the puddle. Two kills for zero, going away at Clucky. And now there's your opportunity, there's your momentum, there's your Baron call. So, initially I was going to criticize Nair for that for that Keeper's Verdict, because he did just knock away uh, both DMX and Super Frank. But then I think about it, those are both tanks. Gunshin was on the jungle above them, 
fighting other people. So, in reality, I think what actually happened was he ended up preventing an engage. Now Super Frank, he's going to be slammed up. He's going to be sent around. The bubble connects. Goodbye, Rain. That's tanky, but not tanky enough. Nairb looking for even more now, potentially onto Muse. Rolara's got the binding. Nairb and the rest of Klucky have to back themselves away. Saw loses their top laner, but they stop the Baron attempt. That is definitely something that they have to do. They do trade a kill for it, but in the grand scheme of things, I guess losing a kill is better than uh, losing Baron for nothing. Never Clucky showing once again that they are not just going to sit back and let the game happen this time around. They are, despite the fact that Saw's always aggressive, Clucky's still in control. Azumi knocked up into the air. Where's the follow-up? Where's the damage? What are they able to do? Gunshin trying to drop down the damage. The Ignite is there. But Azumi, for I don't know how many times now, escapes with just no HP whatsoever. Gunshin uses the pool to get himself away. Boomerang Blade over the wall will not take anybody down. Clucky is low. So is Saw. Everybody backs away, and Azumi Shinichi, I don't know how many lives this guy has, but he has spent more than a few this game. Super Frank's here, he's got the TP, he's got the kill on a talisman, and now they're looking for even more. Can he find sub? Answer's gonna be yes! DMX has the follow-up, smite into the Prey Seeker. That's a two for zero now, going the way of Space Age Wizards. They might have lost that top laner at Baron, but he comes back with a burning vengeance. Once again, I gotta, I gotta criticize Azumi here. He gets caught out again. His team has to become the A-team and save him, which they do, and he manages to get out with just the slightest bit of health. Um, and then the team engages, because now the mid laner's gone. I, I'm Nerb looking potentially to find that kill on a gunship, but the Black Shields doing what Black Shields do, keeping that mid laner alive. That's true, and uh, looking towards this dragon here, definitely not one that they want to get up if they want to manage to get that five dragon by 38 minutes like their opponents did. And I think it's kind of weird. We've, we've seen like a flip-flop of the uh, the way the strategies are going, but uh, unlike previously, there's not like a huge gold lead in favor of, uh, well, the same team comp that Neverquick is playing now. So I don't actually know where it's going to go because in a straight up fight, I do think that Neverclucky has the advantage. But they haven't been able to get a straight-up fight yet because Izumi keeps getting caught out by random bindings. The dragon stack that was going so far in the favor of Saw last game is now in the favor of...